right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, realtor here in Ottawa, Fadi Kuder with Sutton, Ottawa. And today we're joined with Ted Cardi from the Capital Professional Open Mic. Mm -hmm. Mouthful. You can also call it Capo. (laughs) Yeah. So, Ted, thank you so much for coming here hey, to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. So, Ted and I actually met, I want to say about two and a half months ago. We we're at uh, Rogers TV. We were, we're doing the Rogers, Rogers TV, TV gig. Yes, yeah. It was very I'm interesting. In the green like, room. It wasn't, it wasn't a green room. It was no. a little bit different, but we were in the green room we at that point. Room. Yeah. And we decided, you know what? This actually makes sense for us to bring Ted on the show, talk about the Capital Professional Open Mic, and give you guys all the, you know, the information that you want to know about Capo and what it's all about. So I want to start off, Ted, if that's okay with you, with the story about Capo. Tell me the story. So the story, the story started when I was golfing with a few friends at an Ottawa business. So I've been in the business development world in Ottawa for about 22 years, and I've also been in the music world for quite some time. Uh, We were at a golf tournament and everybody reached into their pocket to grab something to mark a ball. They all produced guitar picks. We all sort of laughed. And of course, when you find out when you're amongst anybody and musicians start communicating with each other, they, they immediately kind of have that sort of connection. So it dawned on me that we should encourage the business network under events that were focused around music. So I've also been, because I've been part of the Ottawa music world for quite some time, I, I've also hosted a lot of open mics in my time. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty familiar with running shows and, and putting on concerts and doing that. So I thought, why don't I try to put together a number of business minded, or sorry, I would say musically inclined business people I knew and mm-hmm. some of the the heavier musicians I knew, and we would put together a show. I would I would open it up, so it's technically not an open mic in that you don't register that day of, but it's an open registry, and you can register, and we'll put you on the show. We'll raise money, an organization that uh, serves our community. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like a good formula, and uh, we'd now run our third one. Our last one was just this uh, past Friday, and uh, it was a huge success. We sold every ticket and, and raised a big chunk of change uh, change for uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Ottawa. Fantastic. So it's basically, if I understand this correctly, mm-hmm. you've got networking meets with music or a great cause for the city. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. But and more importantly, though, the, the music is provided mostly by those in the business community. So, you know, we have people who have always been interested in doing this, and we have people who practiced musicians as well to the the music hybrid business community in Ottawa. It always surprises me, but doesn't surprise me. As I go through, I always end up meeting more and more people that are, are yeah. part of this sort of this sort of group. But there's also those who love it and enjoy it and, and look, for, I think an alternative type of, of way of getting together, mm-hmm. nothing against any other type of idea for networking, but you know, we can, we can do something different. And, Absolutely. And, it's and, a networking and with a spin for sure. Networking with a bit more swing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tell me some of the most interesting musicians that you've had on the show. Well, on, on some of your events. You know, I mean, everybody who's come on has been fantastic. We recently had our showcase on, on Friday, and our closing act was a band called uh, Split 312. Brand new band, more or less, but it was a, a band put together by uh, Kevin Ford, Italian. And I've seen Kevin play before. Kevin helped organize a group of uh, other like-minded business executives uh, here in the city to help uh, carry the rainbow a little bit through its transition over pand- over the pandemic. I don't know if you've ever been to the rainbow, you no. know, the club. The rainbow is a very special place. It's where Blues Fest started. And I remember being there when it was a blues show to get turkeys for Thanksgiving. That's where it all started. Definitely dating yourself with that one. I know, I know, I know. But every rock has its layers, right? Mm-hmm. So, but it's a wonderful venue. And to date myself even further, as a musician, there was a time in Ottawa when the live music, and not that the live music scene has changed, but the live music venues were bigger and more numerous. You know, you used to have places like Barrymore's yeah. and Babylon and, and of course, Zaphod's and very and a lot of those, all three. Exactly. Yeah. I saw some incredible music here. And as a musician here, as a home base, and we played in Montreal and we played in Toronto and we we would move around, but Ottawa and its outside area was a very rich place playing. Anyways, we, so Kevin put together his band and uh, Donna, his uh, singer, I was completely floored. I mean, it was one of the best performances mm-hmm. I've seen in quite some time, whether, whether you consider it amateur or not. What type um, of music did they play? They were just doing some covers, but it was just their stage presence. It was how tight their music was. It was, wow. it was a level of musicianship. It was her... 
her delivery and her singing, like she was, this was not a, this was not a karaoke night. This was like watching some you live know, shows you, you, sure, yeah. and, and so the caliber, but you know what? I think that's the best part about Capo. I mean, all of the musicians that we put up there are good. Like, and I, I don't mean to say like there, there are people who are, who are newer to the craft and then there are people who are really, really well practiced. And it isn't really a place for somebody to try it that night. That's, it's not a karaoke type mm -hmm. of thing. It's something where somebody is like, they'll register, and I usually contact everybody who registers and f sort of gets a handle on where they are and what they do. And I try to put them in the lineup where it serves them the best. So we we did it this year where we had, beginning of the night, we had some playing original songs. So you were they were going to be able to get to play one song, give a little context to it. We had it sort of set up like a singer-songwriter's round. That was great for a lot of people who were sort of bringing a new song out there. And then as we moved on towards the end of the night, we had musicians who had assembled as bands, who had some history of doing it. So, you know, there's there's an art to carrying the room, that type of... You know, the other... Uh, the first one we did, we found this band that came to us called the Woodshed Quintet, actually. Was it a quintet or quartet? There were five people when they played our show, and it was a jazz band. I'm a sucker for Duke Ellington era and Ella Fitzgerald and the Satchmo era. I had a singer. Her name is Margot. She was one of the most beautiful singers I'd heard yeah. in quite some time. When you sing that type of music, there's a certain presence, there's a certain subtlety. I was floored by the whole thing. That's one of the things that people come up to me when they come to a capo show. They were like, I'm, I'm surprised that there's this level of, of talent. In Ottawa. In Ottawa, sure. and I'm like, there, you shouldn't be. I mean, it's out there. You just have to go out and yeah. see it. It goes back to like the whole, like I said earlier, the premise of the show is to showcase the fact that Ottawa is not a boring city. There's so much talent in many different ways. I, I mean, I've been in Ottawa. I was born here, but I spent my formative years in Saga, Toronto area. And I moved back here in, to go to university and went to Carleton. And I've always loved Ottawa. I've never found it boring. I think that's a, I think that's just a cheeky term. There's a lot about Ottawa people don't know. Mm -hmm. I think if Ottawa could do anything better uh, collectively, other than make light rail work, <laughs> which it can, it'll never do that's that. That's a conversation we're not going to have on we'll the show. We'll replace that with, with a horse and buggy at some point. But I think it, the arts and culture scene yep. in your city, it's very rich. It's not um, thin. It's very, there's, it's, there's a lot there. I'm always surprised by it. Not so much, so much surprised, but I'm, I'm always satisfied by it. You know, whenever I go and see music or art in the city. And I, I think to myself, I'm home in 15 minutes. This is great. That's the best part about it. I could get on a train and from, I love Toronto, don't get me wrong, but I, you know, it's still, you have to pack a lunch if you drive anywhere. Yeah. So. 45 minutes minimum <laughs> 45 in, minutes. in any sort of direction it depends on how far you leave a lot of people need adult diapers just for that trip you know <laughs> get stuck on the gardener you're done oh man and it's it's one thing that i find a lot of folks that are coming brand new to ottawa yeah. or the you know they for example moved over from other uh, cities or what have you it's always for them really interesting when they find something new about ottawa and you're right like we, yeah. we don't do a great job at highlighting what's available what's here as far as the music scene um, and all of it, like yeah, you know, I think I think we're all suffering from that. I think one of the big holes in 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 culture right now is opportunities for local stories. Mm -hmm. You know, you're seeing local media disappear. You're seeing local radio, local print is gone. Organizations that are trying to uh, tell local stories now. I mean, we have to rely on people like you and other people who are like, you know, what I'm going to take my time and my effort to do this. Yeah. Um, and, um, but it is, I think the consequence of that too is, is we get separate from each other in ways that is not productive. But Ottawa is a good place. It's been my home for quite some time. My family is here. I'm, I've always been very proud of the city. You know, I'm, I've always been people, I find people from Toronto, if they think that Ottawa is boring, they're saying it out of the side of their mouth because they're, they're like, I'm, it might be less exciting than Toronto, but I'm still kind of glad I'm here. Yeah. And if you really want to throw down and do it, in the most fascinating city in Canada, you just go to Montreal. It's an hour and 40 minutes That's away. It. If you really want to you ring that bell out. at five in the morning, there's then a, go you're, for it. you're less than a, you're a $150 Uber ride there and back. If you're planning on it for sure. If you're planning on it. That's one of the things. But, um, but yeah, I do think that uh, culturally, I'm also in the songwriting scene here in Ottawa. That is better than I've ever seen it. Um, Interesting. There's so many great, songwriters in the city right now. And I think that's also something that's come out of the pandemic. 
because I think when the pandemic happened, it it reduced people to rela- to relating to music at a very personal level, right? Because you weren't able to gather under music, mm-hmm. right? And you know, like certain music lends itself to a personal experience. Certain music lends itself to a group experience, yeah. right? You know, music that's designed to kind of make you dance, best shared with the group. Hundred percent. Music that's designed to make you think, cry, or you know, have private reflection that's usually you know and so that songwriting part of it i think where people went away for for quite some time and yeah. they got they got pretty introspective a lot of people came back with a lot of really good material yeah i heard this quote the other day and i'm not sure how it relates i am maybe botching it a little bit here but mm. it said something along the lines of when we're happy we listen to the music but when we're sad we listen to the lyrics um, i think it, i think it's true i think it depends on it depends on what you're what's what's getting your attention i think mu- music music offers everybody no matter where it is culturally whatever it is it offers everybody a a, a gateway to meditation mm-hmm. you know like if you've ever tried to do meditation the whole concept is to try to clear your mind of, and to do that often you kind of have to focus on something sometimes something repetitive something like a mantra, something, a sound, or even whatever. Music gives you that opportunity to do it because when you lock into music, you aren't having any other thoughts per se other than what the music is giving giving you. Well, it's kind of hard, like, especially if you're playing it. It's very hard to have any other thoughts, but... Well, playing it is... It's interesting because playing it is a different craft too because I've often said to people, the secret to, to great musicianship is the ability to listen. It's not the ability to... It's the ability to be present with your instrument, but be able to listen to what you wish to play and listen to what's being played at mm-hmm. the same time as playing it. That, that's more or less the craft for any, you know, any musician worth their salt will probably say that's, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, practice and repetition, but, but to your question about when you, people are sad, they listen to lyrics. Lyrics uh, sit in a musical theory as context. In other words, we can create music that has a feeling. There's a composition idea that says if we use music in this way with this beat under this arrangement, we can evoke feeling of uh, want or we can evoke a feeling of joy or we can evoke a feeling of expectation. Yeah. Music, is, music is all about tension and release. And when we use lyrics, what we're trying to do is we're trying to articulate meaning and give give another way for the listener of the music to hold on to it. And so that's why the lyrics could be something as simple as I want to hold your hand or, you know, a pop song that speaks to a generation of, of people because it phrases something they like in a fun kind of way. Mm-hmm. They're thinking about the lyric. They're registering this thing. I, I get it. In fact, the lyric is so well written that it's now in their head and they've matched it to the rhythm, and they've matched it to the beat, and they've now matched it to the great feeling of being with their friends. Yeah. And that song will live rent-free in their head for the rest of their life. The idea with yeah. a lot of songs is that like they, they have to live in your head rent-free. Otherwise, the artist... And that's didn't why really they mean different things to other people. There's no, you know, I, I would never... I have the music that I like, that, me, that speaks to me. Mm-hmm. But I'm also, I'm also a student of how other musicians are always getting their music to speak to their audience and learning what they're doing or what they're not doing or what they're changing. That's the other thing too. I mean, these are rules, the same rules that apply to produce Mozart apply to produce Pantera. And those are two very different sounds. Extremely different genres as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, one might listen to the other and think it's nothing but a total waste of time, but they, those rules of timber and beat and rhythm and timing and key and, all of that still yeah. needs to be followed. So. 